Welcome to this introduction to Microsoft Project. This is the first in a series of short videos to help you be able to use Microsoft Project to manage your projects. If you've opened Microsoft Project, you will see that you're into this sort of opening screen where you may see different templates and different, different options for you to choose. If you're just starting out to use Microsoft Project, uh, your best bet is just to open a blank project file, which would be just this blank uh, project uh, template, which is the starting point for most projects. So you just double click on that and your screen should appear and you should see a what looks like uh, something, a screen similar to maybe Excel where you see a series of rows and columns and column headings uh, along the top and then your typical software programs where you'll see a series of menus. By the way, if you want to see the, the pull downs to the various menus and you want to have them sort of uh, pinned up there you can just um, click on the pin and then they should uh, stay down whenever you uh, click on a on a different uh, tab along the top so from left to right we have file the file tab which is your typical where you want to save uh, all your files and you want to print them uh, when you want to set up certain options in your program uh, very typical to most software programs then across the rest, you'll see a series of tabs like task, resource, report, project, view, team, format. Uh, these tabs are really specific to what you want to do in Microsoft Project. If it's something you want to do to an activity or a task, likely, likely it would be under the task tab. Uh, if it's that you want to add resources uh, to um, hold accountabilities to various activities uh, then under the resource tab is a very likely location where you would go if you've entered a lot of data in Microsoft Project uh, one of the good things about planning and scheduling with uh, project management software if you enter the data there's an endless amount of reports and data that you can pull together you can filter you can customize and under the report tab you're able to do that under the project tab, it really is if you are doing something globally to the project. So it's where we can put in special information about calendars. It's where we can put project start date information in. It's where we later will talk about in another uh, recording set a baseline where you want to update the project. So it's really about things that have to do with the whole project under that tab. View is how do I want to view the information? How do I want to um, organize it? Uh, you, there's a whole bunch of uh, filters and highlights and groupings that we can perform. Uh, we can adjust how we view the information on the uh, Gantt chart, which appears over in this area. You know, whether we want to show it by days, hours, weeks, how we want to scale it up. And then there's different information too um, regarding how we want to um, display uh, the network diagram, uh, which screen we want to be looking at, the Gantt chart, tracking Gantt, a lot of different choices in here. Um, the team tab, if you're working in teams, you can uh, utilize this function. Uh, generally, this will be outside the scope of what we're doing, but it is there um, if, if there's collaboration going on. Um, under the format tab, uh, this is how you want it to look like you can uh, display it in different colors. Uh, you can uh, display the critical activities so you can have them displayed and shown or not shown. So if that's checked, it'll show the critical activities in red typically, or you can also format different colors for different bar types. You can use some of the drawing tools that you usually see in most uh, Microsoft Office programs, which can come in very handy in more advanced features where we want to sort of outline uh, delays and what's going on in the project. We can do little drawings on top of the Gantt chart just to explain things if we want, and then we can take snapshots. So there's a lot of different functions that can go on under these various tabs. The ones that you'll most likely be starting out with would be the task tab uh, when you're initially setting up a project and the project tab where you want, might want to put in the project start date. For example, project information. 
uh, if you want to put in when you want this project to start, you would put it in here. So you just pull this down and you select what date you want this project to actually um, start on. So if I wanted it to start on, uh, let's say I wanted to start on uh, September 15th, 2020. If I click there and I click OK, then that will be when I enter information, it will put that down. So for example, if I said that I was going to um, do a, I don't know, a bathroom renovation. I type that in, press enter. And you notice that when I do that, um, a little thumbtack comes up. And you also notice that this, these are remaining blank for now. So I'm just going to pull this, much like you would in Excel. If a column is too small, you can just pull it to shape it. And what, I, this, what this tab is referring to, this is what we call manual schedule. So it means this activity is manually scheduled. What I would like for the activity to be is auto scheduled. And I'm going to click on that and you'll see it puts in the date. For, for most purposes, you'll want your activities to be put into auto schedule. If you have an older version of Microsoft Project going back to 2007, they didn't even have a manual or auto schedule. It was all auto schedule. Manual schedule is, is okay if you want to just put in a series of activities and you don't want them to do anything for now and maybe later you want to um, enact them. Um, so you want them kind of dormant there. Uh, you could have it under manual schedule. Uh, but otherwise, I would advise that you have everything under auto schedule. Now, it'll kind of drive you nuts if you don't change uh, the program so that it's doing all the activities that you enter in auto schedule. For example, I've got bathroom renovation here. And let's say I had um, uh, demolish, demolish existing bathroom and I press enter, it's back to manual schedule. And so then I would have to go in and I would have to go auto schedule. Well, a much better thing to do would be to go down to the bottom left of your screen, click on where it says manual schedule, click auto schedule. And now what it will do is any new activities that I now put in, um, so demolish existing uh, bathroom. Um, so let's say, uh, stud walls, I press enter, and now it's on auto schedule. And you notice it puts it at September 15th, 2020. That's because I put in under the project start, start date and project information, I put that as my start date. If I didn't do that, it would be putting in today's date as the start date. It would assume today is the starting date. Now, of course, if I did leave it at today's date as the start date, I could always later go in and put when I wanted the project to start and it would move everything to the project start date, which is fine too. So you have the ability to change things as you go along. You're not necessarily um, stuck at one point. So for entering tasks, we just uh, enter the tasks and generally speaking, uh, you know, I've got demolish existing bathrooms, uh, stud, stud walls. Um, maybe I could have rough in uh, plumbing, rough in electrical, rough in HVAC as a series of activities. You notice when I press enter, it puts one day and it puts a question mark. The question mark is telling you, hey, you didn't actually give me a duration. So it's like a warning. It's a flag to say, hey, you didn't give me a duration. What do you want? Uh, otherwise, it just by default puts in one day. Now you notice I could I could just enter a series of let's say task one, task two, task three, task four, task five. Now if I put five and I press enter, it'll put five days by default. If I put five D, it'll put five days. If I put five H it'll put five hours. If I put five M, it'll put five minutes. If I put five MO, it'll put five months and so on, right? So you can pretty much get the idea of how um, this plays out. Uh, it basically, 
whatever the first letter is that you put, it will utilize that. So five, and again, I could put another one here. I could put five W for five weeks. Uh, the other thing is, there. you notice that it's five days. Today is showing as, uh, or sorry, uh, September uh, 15th is showing as a Tuesday. And so the five days is actually um, crossing the weekend. So we can sort of see there that it's crossing uh, the Saturday and Sunday. So it's not counting Saturday and Sunday. That's because the days are work days. They're not calendar days. They're work days. So we have five days in place and it covers that um, amount. Now let's say I put, let's say it was concrete and I had concrete curing. Well, you know what? Concrete cures over a weekend as well. So in a case like that, I might want to put 5ED. And then if I put 5ED, it's going to count Saturday. So you got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It will count that. The E stands for elapsed days. It'll go through non-working time. By default, the calendar is showing non-working time as Saturday and Sunday. Uh, in another video, we'll talk about how you can change and adjust the calendar um, to suit your purposes. Uh, the default is typically a 40-hour week, working eight hours a day, Monday to Friday, and not working Saturday and Sunday. Of course, we can make this program work whenever we want. So we have full flexibility on however we want to set it up. So that's sort of just giving you an idea of how, how that's structured. Now, as we're basically setting up activities, one of the ways that we link activities together, and I'm just going to maybe get rid of these um, activities that I've listed here. So what I would suggest if you want to get rid of a series of activities, you just highlight them and then you just press the delete button and they will disappear. So going back up to the top here, let's, let's do a couple of things here. Uh, if we want to create a work breakdown structure, we can just highlight these activities and that will um, highlight them for anything that we want to do to them. We can go up to the task tab, click on the task tab and click on the indent. So now we have these activities are indented under the heading of bathroom renovation. So demolish existing bathroom and we are going to say that that's going to take uh, two days. And we're going to say stud walls. We're going to say that that's going to take one day. And we're going to say rough and plumbing is going to take uh, two days. Rough and electrical will say three. And rough and HVAC will say one day. Okay. So we're just giving some duration for these activities. The next thing we want to figure out is how do we want to sequence the work? So to put in the sequencing, we utilize this column called predecessors. And in the predecessor column, we say what must happen before something else. So before we do the stud walls, we're saying we want to strip out the bathroom. And before we rough in the plumbing, we say we want to have the stud walls done. And we could basically say rough in electrical would be after rough in plumbing and rough in HVAC. So we could go four and then we could go five. And it puts one after the other. The other way we could have done that is we could, if I delete these for now, we could just highlight all of these in a row from top to bottom and sequence how you sequence it is important. So from top to bottom, and then basic, then what we could do is we could link these activities up here with the link icon. So you just click on the link icon. Now, of course, I would have to be under the task tab and you'll see it looks like a chain link and we click on that and I'll link them. If you ever decide you don't want something linked, you could either delete it over here or you could click here and it will unlink them. So that's to link. This is to unlink. So that puts them in order of how we want this to go. We could also have, let's say, uh, building system inspections. Maybe I'll allow three days here. And then what I could say is I'm going to, I for the building uh, system inspections, let's change that to inspections. Uh, I'm going to have here, I'm going to say building system 
inspections approved. I'm going to widen this column a little bit. Try and get that all in there. And I'm going to put for building systems inspections that I want to have four done. I want to have five done and I want to have six done. And so you notice that when I did that, it places link arrows as successors to these activities or predecessors to building systems inspections. So now those activities are linked um, that way. Now, it really doesn't make sense for me to, to sort of uh, link uh, these here and then link that there if I was going to do it in this sequence. So to be honest, if I was going to avoid double linking things, I could just have this say predecessor, right? So predecessor number six. And so that would be much more clean in this example because it because really what I've said is this has to be done before I start that. That has to be done before I start that and this has to be done before I start that. So it kind of follows uh, that process, whereas before I had them, this has to be done, that has to be done, and then these all have to be done, but I really had said it when I had these linked one after the other. So the next thing I want to do here is maybe, maybe that's not the way I want this to go. Let's assume it's a really big bathroom, okay? So it's a really big bathroom, and let's get rid of the links that are here, here, here. And let's change this a little bit. And let's have, we got rough in plumbing. And let's say that once we have the stud walls done, we're going to rough in the electrical, we're going to rough in the HVAC all at the same time. In that case, then it would require that I would have building system inspections that rough in plumbing has to be done, rough in electrical has to be done, rough in HVAC has to be done before I do those. That would be very important to do that that way. So they would all be linked one after the other. And then I would have building systems inspections approved. I would just put number seven. And because building systems improved is really the completion of something, it's not the doing of something, I would put a zero duration there. And you notice it makes it a diamond shape. What that's doing is it's making it a milestone. So that now means that building systems inspection approved is a milestone. It's a point in time. And that when you give something zero duration a Microsoft project, that's what it will do to it. So we've based we've just entered these activities one after the other and we have them in sync that they're all uh, starting after stud walls. To be honest in a, in a bathroom that would be too much going on in one room but I just wanted to show you the process of how you can have things start at the same time and then how they can complete. So we have uh, the milestone date is at September 25th and that's all structured. What I don't see here is the critical path. I'd like to see the critical path. So if I go to the format tab, sorry, the view tab, uh, actually the format tab, and you see where it says critical tasks? If I click that, it will show the critical path in red. So the critical path is displayed in red. That means that's the longest path to complete the project. And it's very important that everything is linked. Every predecessor, every activity should have a predecessor and a successor except the first activity won't have a predecessor and the last activity won't have a successor. So that's important to also understand that we want to have a complete network, everything linked to each other. If we don't do that, then it can be problematic. So I'll just give you a quick look at that if that happens. I'm going to get rid of the number five here. And let's see what that looks like. Do you see how it changed what's critical? This activity here is not linked, so it's just sort of idling there. And if rough and electrical took longer, 
it wouldn't show exactly what's necessarily going on the project, right? So it, it's, it's not showing the impact it has on other activities, which would not be a good thing. So we have to be careful that we always complete the network and that all the activities are linked uh, in their proper order. So I think what I do here. Um, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to go 4, 5, 6. And then we've got them all back and linked up. And this way, if this takes longer, you'll see that it will move those activities out and change the dates on those succeeding activities, which is very, very important if the scheduling software and using the critical path method is to work uh, properly. We could, of course, then save our file, and then we will have uh, completed this quick introduction of how you start up a project file. Well, please join me for more Microsoft Project Use videos on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.